Hey, welcome. So I've been getting a lot of questions and comments regarding smoke testing the EVAP system. So I figured I would share with you the process that I take, but before we get to that, let's just cover a couple of the things common with smoke testing across the board. First of all, why do we do it? In the event of an EVAP leak, say a 442 small leak, a 455 large leak, that kind of thing, we have to have a way to figure out where that leak is coming from you know, after the gas cap's been changed, of course, right? Because that's always the first step it seems to be. Uh, but we got to figure out where that leak is coming from. So the process that I take, actually before that, let's talk about our smoke machine. This one right here is the Smoke Pro Air Complete Diagnostic Leak Detector. It is a unique smoke machine in the fact that it doesn't require an external air source. It actually has a built-in compressor inside of it. So when you're mobile or you're diagnosing on the go, you don't have to carry around an air tank or a nitrogen tank to um, get this uh, smoke machine operational, to build that pressure. So all this thing requires is 12 volt power, which is kind of cool. But again, the smoke machine doesn't matter as long as it's intended for the EVAP system. The difference is a smoke machine that's intended to check for like air intake leaks and that kind of thing, they can put out up to 10, 20, maybe even 30 PSI of pressure this one is intended to put out, I believe it's under two PSI of pressure. EVAP systems really are only meant to handle about a PSI or so of pressure inside of that system. Anything more, and you could risk um, actually wrecking something in that system. All right, so you get your smoke machine all hooked up and you're ready to go. What do you do next? You gotta prep the vehicle because most EVAP systems in their standstill, key on, engine off state, they are open or a vented system through the charcoal canister. If you were to try to smoke test this thing right now, it would have a huge leak through the normally open vent solenoid. That is our back door. The vent solenoid would need to be closed in order to properly seal up our system to be able to check this thing for smoke. So we really have three entry or exit points that are normally opened or closed on our EVAP system. We have our purge solenoid. That's gonna be the one that's under the hood and on this vehicle, it's actually right here. This is a 3.6 liter GM and an 11 Traverse, but it doesn't matter. Our purge solenoid is almost always under the hood connected to the intake manifold. Normally closed on this guy right here. Then we have our vent solenoid that's under the back of the vehicle by the, by the uh, gas tank. That is gonna be normally open on most systems, okay? That needs to be closed to perform our smoke test. And then of course, the most common leak spot, the gas cap and filler neck area that we're constantly opening to put fuel in the car, that's gonna be another point of entry or exit of the smoke um, that we commonly think of. But the thing with EVAP systems is we have hoses and a gas tank and all, all these other seals and things in between our purge solenoid under the hood, the vent solenoid in the back of the system and the filler neck gas cap on the side. Any of those points in there can cause an EVAP leak and cause our problem. So first thing I like to do when I'm getting ready to perform a smoke test is hook up my smoke machine and make sure it actually works. There's nothing worse than hooking up your smoke machine and actually attempting to smoke test something only to find out that it's not putting out any smoke. It's only filling the system with air. So we'll go ahead and hit the smoke test button and it takes a minute for the smoke to, uh, the, the oil that's inside to warm up. Once it does, we have smoke. All right, so always verify that first. Uh, otherwise you could end up really, really chasing your tail, <laughs> looking for smoke that isn't there. Uh, it's the worst if you run out of the oil in the middle of a diagnosis, it can lead you astray. Um, now, where do you hook into the system? There's a lot of points of entry that you can use. Personally, I don't like to go into the gas cap area. Now, there are special tools out there that you can adapt directly to the gas cap itself. You know, you take the gas cap off, you put this guy in, you can check the system through there. I personally don't like to do it this way because now we just took out a common failure point in the filler net gas cap section where we're forcing that smoke in. I personally prefer to go at the purge solenoid itself. So I would normally go ahead and verify that the purge itself is fully functional and not leaking. I would run the engine um, idling and I would put my vacuum gauge on the purge solenoid port, pull this hose off. I would run, put my vacuum gauge right there, verify that I have no vacuum when the purge solenoid is actually unplugged because that would mean the system 
would be normally closed at that point, all right? Purge solenoid would be normally closed, should not have any vacuum here. If I verified that, I'm good to go on the purge solenoid. I can check everything from this hose and back. I can check the entire system by hooking into one point on this vehicle and on many vehicles, this is an, a good way to go. Now there are some vehicles out there that have those little green caps under the hood and they have a little Schrader valve type port inside of there like a, like a fuel rail Schrader valve, that type of thing. Uh, if, it's got, if it's underneath the green cap that's going to be EVAP, you could use a, an adapter like this, hook your smoke machine into that, uh, into that port as well. But now you haven't verified the purge solenoid is sealed up. So you could be dumping smoke into the intake manifold and you may not ever know it. So you always want to check that. Now, a lot of vehicles on their purge hose will just run a rubber hose with a hose clamp. Now this is a very special attaching hose. Um, it's got O-rings down inside of there. We don't want to wreck this thing by shoving something in here that's not supposed to be. All right. A lot of times our purge solenoids are a common size that we would see on a fuel rail. So if you have a fuel pressure master kit or whatever you want to call it, it comes with a bunch of adapters, right? That's what this is right here. This is just an adapter out of my master um, fuel pressure test kit. So I pull this adapter out and it is the perfect size to fit inside of there. Clicks in place, engages on the O-rings, nice and snug, nice and secure. Now I have somewhere very easy to attach my cone fitting on my smoke machine. All right, there's smoke. Go ahead and put it into the system. So we shouldn't see any leaks from there. But now the, the system is being filled with smoke, but we haven't closed that back door yet, right? We haven't closed the vent solenoid. So if you have a full function scan tool, you can do it very easily on a lot of vehicles. You go into your, your functional tests so we'll go into output controls and we'll grab the vent solenoid open close. Okay. This is going to allow us to remotely close the vent solenoid. So we have open and close command up there. EVAP vent solenoid command is currently venting. Fuel tank pressure in inches of water is 0.25, meaning we're not applying any pressure to the system right now, even though the smoke machine is pumping smoke into there. Close the vent solenoid. Immediately we go to not venting and our fuel tank pressure begins to climb. That's what you want to see when you're smoke testing a system. Now this is a known good. This isn't a vehicle that's actually got a leak, but the system is pressurized at that point. If we go ahead and open it, it's pretty common that under max pressure with your smoke machine, the vent solenoid will not open. You can see our fuel tank pressure is holding right now. The only way to get that vent solenoid to open is to release the pressure either through the port that you just connected here, or you pull the gas cap off. So if I pull this hose out of here, there we go, we get a bunch of smoke all around. There our vent solenoid reopened. So it was actually being stuck closed by the pressure inside of the system. Just remember that, that's normal condition when testing this type of system. We'll close it again, I heard it click in the back of the vehicle. And we'll watch it climb. Now, a lot of times, if you don't have a full function scan tool, you can go ahead and manually control that vent solenoid in the back. What you would do is figure out which one has power, because most of these vent solenoids are going to be fed power all the time, and then they're going to be ground side controlled by the ECM. So if you figure out which side is power, leave that side connected, and then back probe in and run a wire, a fuse jumper wire to ground, you're going to go ahead and command that vent solenoid to turn on and close the system. Now we're closed where we uh, entered the system here at the front by the purge solenoid. We're closed in the back by the vent solenoid. Fuel filler cap is um, on as well. Our system is currently sealed. And eventually, once we pump enough pressure into the system here, our little ball inside of our, um, inside of our sight glass here should drop down towards the zero mark. So let's say that this is all the better it got. This would be confirming that we have a leak in the system. We have pressure currently inside of the system but there is a slight leak to the system itself. Now is the time when you get out your, your bright flashlight and you would go looking around the system for that smoke to be coming out. Now, 
I recently watched a video, I believe Mario had put it out, but it was a suggestion from somebody else where he actually used a laser light to find that smoke. I thought that was a really cool trick. I've never done it. I've never used a laser light, but it makes sense, right? If you can see the laser, there's obviously smoke there because sometimes the hardest thing can be to actually see the smoke with your light as you're looking through the system. Now, one other thing, as I go back towards the filler neck and the gas cap here, one other thing I like to verify is, how do you know if smoke has made it through the entire system to actually find it? I like to pull the gas cap off and verify that I actually have smoke coming out. So by pulling off the gas cap like that, you're able to verify that smoke has made it from this purge hose all the way to the back of the vehicle. You could do the same thing with the vent solenoid as well. You could wait to close the vent solenoid until you have smoke pouring out of the vent. That's up to you depending on how you wanna do it. Um, I typically will just open up the gas cap like that very quickly, verify if smoke, close it back up, and go looking through the system uh, for that smoke to leak out. All right, so make sure your smoke machine is rated for testing EVAP systems. Make sure you seal up the system by closing the vent solenoid. Make sure you know that your purge solenoid is okay or you test the purge solenoid itself. And then make sure that your smoke machine is working and you have smoke flowing through the entire system. That's how you're gonna be able to produce a repeatable, accurate smoke test on a system. And then always, always, always make sure that you very, very carefully look at the system. If it has a leak, you'll find it using a smoke machine 99 times out of 100. I would say there's very few cases where you're not gonna find it. Also, just a real quick side note, if the vehicle has the ability to run an EVAP self-test, it's a good idea to go ahead and perform that. A lot of EVAP failures are actually intermittent problems. If you're smoke testing a system that's not currently acting up, you're gonna have a really hard time finding the leak. If the system has an EVAP system self-test that can be performed, go ahead and do that first. If it fails the self-test, then you know that the leak is present and you're not gonna be wasting your time. If it passes the self-test, it's possible or probable that you're not gonna be able to find the leak at that moment because it's not actually occurring. So should you hook up the smoke machine at that point? Probably not. I would probably then next go towards uh, actuating a bunch of the valves a bunch of the time. So open up and close that purge solenoid a bunch of times, hoping it'll stick, or open and close the vent solenoid a bunch of times, hoping it'll stick, something like that, to try to get that intermittent failure to pop up. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on hooking up your, uh, your smoke machine and performing a repeatable, accurate smoke test on a vehicle. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell icon down there so you get a notification next time we air one of our videos. I really appreciate you guys watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, and stay safe, everyone. And of course, as always, happy wrenching. Thank you.